Good afternoon once again. We are greeting you at the Government Cosmonaut Training Center. And uh, today we have a press conference for the primary and the backup crew for expeditions 31 32 to the ISS. For the flight program, the launch is scheduled on May 15th, and this will be Soyuz TMA 04M. Let me introduce the primary crew that will be launching then. The commander of the transport vehicle, the commander of ISS 32, and the flight engineer of ISS 31, Gennady Padalka, Aeroscosmos uh, engineer, Cosmos uh, cosmonaut. Uh, Sergei Revin, who is going to be the flight engineer on both the Soyuz vehicle and the ISS, and a NASA astronaut, Joseph Akabar, who is a flight engineer on the Soyuz vehicle and uh, the flight engineer on the ISS. And the backup crew, the Soyuz vehicle commander and the flight engineer of the ISS, Oleg Novitsky, the flight engineer of uh, both the ISS and the Soyuz vehicle, Evgeny Tarelkin, and uh, flight engineer two of the Soyuz vehicle, and uh, the flight engineer of the ISS, Kevin Ford. And the lead for the the Gagarin Cosmo Training Center, Sergei Krikalov, is taking part in our press conference. So please go ahead with your questions and uh, tell at once uh, who you are asking this question. This is the Idartas News Agency. First of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, everybody on the exams, on the upcoming flight, and I have a question to the primary crew. The first question is, what talisman, what token you're going to have, because you've had a crew who didn't take anything with them on board the station. And a question to all the other crew members, what items are you going to take with you? And one more question for Joseph and for Sergei, since that's their first flight uh, on the ISS. What do you expect from this flight? What plans do you have? Uh, what are your expectations? Thank you very much for your question. Uh, it's a good question. And uh, I think I'm going to pass the floor to Joe because uh, he was the one who chose the talisman. As regards items we are going to take with us, and now we are in the electronics age, uh, so I'm going to take an iPod and an iPad. You have music, you have films, you have everything on them. So it's very useful. So, Joe, maybe you're going to talk about the talisman. Yeah, um, has been very gracious and offered uh, us new flyers the opportunity to, to fly the, uh, the talisman. And so I've selected uh, Smokey the Bear who is a character in the United States that's been around since the 1940s uh, that makes people aware of human-caused fires and how important the natural environment is. And I supported Joe in this uh, decision because I've been busy with uh, environmental things since 1994. As regards uh, my personal items that I'm going to take with me, during our expedition, we are going to celebrate at least three birthdays. <laughs> the first birthday will occur on the docking day, and this will be Joe's birthday on May 17th. And then we'll have uh, two birthdays, uh, Gennady's on uh, June 21st, and uh, for Oleg Kononenko on the very same day. So I'm taking small presents with me. And I hope to make a pleasant surprise for them. I hope they'll find these uh, presents useful during their flight. I also hope that these presents of mine will lift their spirits a bit. But other than that, since this is my first flight, I know that uh, my uh, comrades uh, take small souvenirs with them, and I'm taking a small kangaroo. <laughs> and uh, we all know that kangaroos, they hop, they jump, they leap forward. So this is kind of a leap forward for me. That was my association connected with this flight. Thank you. 
What is that? They didn't really quite answer the other part of the question. Okay, I'm going to say a few things about the flight. So despite the fact that this flight has been cut down, it used to be 160 days, now it's down to 120. Our experiment program is uh, very intensive. We are planning an extravehicular activity, a spacewalk, in order to extend further the Russian segment, in order to for us to receive an upcoming Russian module in, uh, in some time in the future. Also, an experiment with a, a small satellite predicting its launch and its descent. And this all connected uh, with the problem of uh, space debris. And we also have uh, lots of vehicle traffic. Russian uh, vehicles, uh, the European ATV vehicle that we are going to send to the ground, and uh, the Japanese vehicle, HTV, also expecting to receive, to receive it at the station. <laughs> so the commander responded for everybody. Russian Cosmos, I have a question for Sergei. This is your first flight, and I'm wondering what your expectations are and what experiments uh, you're interested in and what experiments, such as physics experiment, uh, did you prepare for this flight? And then one more question for the backup crew. It's uh, what you think about your upcoming uh, backup role. As regards experiments, uh, actually, by education, I'm uh, a, phys a physicist. So my program is uh, quite extensive, and uh, it deals not only with physics, but also with the uh, space industry, and uh, the space area is very huge. So I chose uh, an experiment which is uh, education-related, and it will be called Lessons from Space. And it's an experiment oriented on education for five to seven graders. And we already have a scenario, we have a methodology, and uh, we also have uh, people who will be dealing with the ecology. Joe and Gennady, they have lots of uh, ecological experiment, and I'm trying to be up to par. So our lessons will uh, have that ecological constituent as well. And these lessons will be aimed at showing how our planet, how interesting it is and uh, that it should be well protected of showing and demonstrating all this to the kids. And actually, I did teach at school and I tried this methodology and I can provide more detail probably later. As regards uh, our crew, uh, the word is uh, Kazbek. It's uh, the highest mountain in the Caucasus Mountains. And it's the altitude. It's, uh, it seems unattainable. So this is something which uh, makes sense when you think about space flights. Thank you. I have a question for Gennady. How did the exams go? And the second, what uh, does it look like to be in space? Because it's really hard. Even though you are with colleagues, you are still in a closed-up environment. And how difficult this is from the psychological standpoint. The exams went uh, rather well. 
both the backup and the primary crew passed exams. And what is the most difficult thing when up in space? Uh, it's probably not the technological part of it, it's probably the psychological part. So it's very important to have uh, a good crew and lots of things depend on the on the commander. And fortunately, we have a very good international crew, both Russians and Americans, who also used to have uh, people from other uh, partners, such as uh, Canadian, we had Europeans. So this is very important, and it's also very important to work around all the issues and uh, work on the problems which uh, may occur. And uh, to make pass to make sure that uh, no psychological things uh, take a negative effect on our job. Also, I have a question. Uh, what do you think about the transfer from a three-member crew to a six-member crew? Well, it's becoming more and more interesting. And uh, it's uh, very practical, too, because the station is so big that you really need six crew members to support and to maintain the station. And we do get a three-member crew, crew, three member crew when uh, one of the crews depart, and uh, we have only three members left on board the station. And I, liked, I wanted to add a few words, but I think that uh, Gennady told about everything. As regards difficulties uh, during flight, yes, there may be certain psychological problems, but uh, we know that all people here, present here, are motivated to make the space flight a success, and this uh, determines uh, lots of facts and also successful also successful outcome of the mission. Thank you. Uh, it's been three years since your last visit to the space station and the uh, crew member aboard STS-119 on shuttle Discovery. What are you looking forward to most uh, on this mission as a one-day crew member? Yeah, like most of us that have the opportunity to fly on the shuttle, the missions are usually about two weeks, and our time docked to the station was very short, maybe seven days. So I think uh, we all look forward to returning, and instead of just visiting the space station, actually having the time to live and work there, when we were there last time, we needed help where to find things. Uh, it was just like when you go to visit somebody. So now it will be our home and looking forward to spending a lot of time up there, uh, participating in all the experiments. We've got a lot going on. Uh, it could be very historic with uh, SpaceX going up while we're there. So I think we're going to see a lot of great things and looking forward to that little bit longer experience. Yeah, my kids will uh, they'll all be in the United States when we uh, have our launch, our launch in Baikonur, um, but they had the opportunity to see me launch in Florida, and so we've, uh, I think it was more of a shock that first time around. But the one thing, you know, I'd like to thank them and my whole family because we get this opportunity to go into space, and for us, it, it seems uh, we've been trained so much for it that we're ready to go, but really for the families, it's much more stressful, and they have to watch us uh, do this launch, so just want to thank them for realizing how stressful and how much they're worrying for it. So, thanks. Well, as regards whether Gennady and uh, I dreamed to fly together, yes, Gennady is a very experienced crew member, so yes, probably I did dream about this. And I think this would be the same thing for all of our crew. We are already grateful for the fact that we had a chance to train together during our training and sims and uh, when uh, Gennady is doing things, we all try to follow in his steps and uh, to do just the way he did it. When is your launch? It's uh, in October, October 15th. So we hope everything goes well. Well, um, indeed, I have actually flown with Gennady Kodolka in space because uh, I flew an STS-128 in September of 2009, and Gennady was the commander of the International Space Station when I visited there. This is uh, Cosmonautics News. I have a question to U.S. astronauts, to Ford and Akaba. What do you think about the uh, Russian Soyuz vehicle? 
What do you make of it? It's uh, quite an honor to be part of this program. And Kevin and I were talking about this before, how lucky we are to be able to come out here, uh, train with the cosmonauts, our training team, and to learn a new spacecraft like the Soyuz. It has a great history of being reliable. Um, I'm really looking forward to, of course, working with my crewmates. I'm still learning a lot. Um, of course, the, uh, the landing will be a little bit different than we're used to on the shuttle, but I think we're mentally prepared for that. Uh, for me, um, of course, the Soyuz has always been our, uh, our lifeboat, if you will, on the space station, so uh, we've always had full confidence and faith in the, uh, the outstanding hardware that the Soyuz has. Uh, when I flew uh, on the space shuttle before, I flew in the uh, front right seat. It's the exact same seat I have in the Soyuz. Though my duties are a little bit different uh, on this flight, uh, it's great to see uh, uh, Oleg and Yevgeny uh, operate the, uh, the Soyuz in such a professional fashion. I would say, uh, you know, the way we feel in the U.S., uh, without the space shuttle, of course, uh, there would be no space station because of the very important role it played in construction. But, uh, of course, the same thing is true about the Soyuz because of the uh, critical role it plays in the crews uh, living and staying aboard and being transported back and forth. Just a very good international friendly arrangement to operate this uh, great international space station. Thank you. Additions, please. No, <laughs> there was something about the new vehicle. We'll have a new vehicle. Uh, we're going to launch a new capsule, and if everything goes well, it will be dark into the station. We mentioned SpaceX today, and uh, this is already being planned. It's uh, it's currently on. Thank you, Sergey. More questions, please. If there are no questions, I'd like to ask. Uh, one of mine to Gennady. And uh, I have one more question for our U.S. colleagues. What do you think about uh, the differences and uh, the similarities between the training systems uh, in Russia and the U.S.? Uh, how does it differ from yours? Uh, Lena, what did you say? I didn't quite hear. Was it uh, the Sputnik experiment? Yes, it's a very small experiment, and we're going to introduce a new satellite into orbit, and uh, they're going to monitor it from the ground. So it's as simple as that. There is it isn't really a big deal. But other than that, the program is very, very extensive. And uh, we're also going to conduct experiments uh, with uh, perspective and uh, uh, future technologies such as uh, the Klonovsky crystal experiment, uh, which is uh, helpful in creating a plasma engine for the future. And if you're interested in uh, details, you can ask further. Hi, now we also have a question for U.S. astronauts. Just like Joe, flying. please. It's really an honor to be training here uh, with a great history to be part of this program. And you know, I'm very, very impressed with the instructors that are here. Uh, they are just they're wonderful, their expertise. Uh, is incredible and what's been really nice is that you know coming from the United States of course the cultures are different the language is difficult and everyone here has been very very patient with us uh, and making sure that we're going to be ready for our flight and what's great is that um, now I can call a lot of the people that work here not only colleagues but good friends so it's been an honor to be out here and I guess the, the difference with the training between uh, the United States and being here is when you're at home, you have other duties that pull you away from the training. And here, when we're in Russia, our sole focus is the training. And so it's really nice to be able to focus on that while we're in Russia. I agree uh, completely with Joe. And uh, I'd just like to, um, to add also that uh, spacecraft are just incredibly complicated machines. 
And as the crew asking questions, we, we never reached the bottom of their depth of knowledge. They always know the answers. And uh, just uh, in, in the USA uh, versus here, uh, like Joe said, here we, we really concentrate, but it's made a bit diff more difficult, of course, because uh, most of it's presented in the Russian language. But uh, certainly a privilege and an honor uh, to be here and spend time at uh, GCTC and, uh, and with the Russian spacecraft. A question uh, to the primary crew. What scientific experiments are of most interest to you? Uh, I'd say these are ecological experiments because I also deal with ecology. We have a number of experiments and have been modified and this is not simply monitoring the Earth's surface, but also monitoring uh, spectral areas and also medical experiments to monitor what's going on with my body, how it changes uh, in space. Also experiments with uh, future space technologies that I've mentioned already. Things like this. I, for one, would say that uh, I'm interested uh, in uh, those activities which uh, require creative approach. Well, we all know that uh, all our activities on board are highly structured. Experiment starts, experiment ends, or ex the experiment is going on. And uh, I'm interested uh, in uh, such types of work where I can utilize my creative abilities. I'm also interested in uh, watching the Earth from space. And uh, one more area of uh, our activity. Let me explain. Uh, piloted flights do influence uh, views that people have on space and on uh, human space flights on the ground. And uh, I'm interested in, uh, you may call them educational projects, which uh, are supported by Roscosmos, as uh, I said, lessons from space and uh, learning about the station systems and uh, the uh, ground ecological, Earth's ecological systems. I forward to participating in a lot of the medical experiments that we have going on right now in the space station. Uh, we're looking at all parts of the body to see how the human body behaves in space and how we can do things uh, for longer periods of time. Even though we've been going to space for over 50 years, there's still a lot we don't know about how the human body reacts in space. And if we do want to get beyond the space station and go further out, um, there's still things that we need to learn. So it's great to be part of that and knowing that we're contributing to that part of the space program. Uh, you have been in space uh, three times, so uh, do you expect to experience or find anything new in this fourth time? And uh, what does it attract you so much that you want to go back four times? No, what I'm attracted by, first of all, is uh, my work. And uh, the station is much bigger. We have new Russian modules. Two new Russian modules. We have new modules uh, on the West segment. And I'm also interested to take a look at the new commercial vehicle. I'm also interested in the scientific uh, area and the experiments, as I already said. But what will be the most attractive part? I think it's uh, no secret that uh, actually the flight to the station, the flight back from the station. So it's exciting and interesting. One of your colleagues uh, mentioned once that uh, you could uh, choose a menu. Say, what I want for breakfast. Uh, Gennady, you are going to be a guest uh, at uh, our 
program when you come back. The variety of meals that we have is really wide. And uh, there are a few items that you can get uh, at a grocery store, at an ordinary grocery store. So well, there are items that uh, I do love. I love ice cream, but uh, ice cream in space is not quite the ice cream. Do you gain weight? No, not really, because we have uh, two and a half hours of physical activities planned for each day. What about your colleagues? I don't really have space flight experiment experience. Uh, uh, given the conditions on our planet, on Earth. So I have to say what I like here on the ground. And I do like traditional Russian meals. I like uh, seafood. I like Japanese food. I like seafood. I think it's uh, both healthy and uh, delicious. I also like berries, forest berries, uh, ones that you can uh, get in uh, glass jars. Unfortunately, I can't take glass jars uh, with you to the station. But uh, I have some containers with me, and uh, I also like uh, berry jams. And I do hope that my taste won't change when I'm up there. <laughs> And uh, Joe probably have never had certain of those berries. What about well, the, Joe? The US side, we have a standard 19-day uh, menu. Um, and over a, a four-month period, that can get uh, maybe a little bit boring. So um, we are allowed to have a few bonus containers that are sent up. And uh, these guys have really uh, tempted me with the Russian food. So I've asked for a little bit of extra food, uh, Russian food, um, so that I don't need to take all of theirs. Uh, you asked uh, what uh, crew members uh, choose for themselves, uh, separate meals. And I'd like to say that it's possible to modify the standard menu, the menu that you already have. You can uh, choose somewhat more of this and somewhat less of that. And when I flew, we had uh, a menu that repeated every fifth day and then uh, every seventh day. And there are certain items that re repeat uh, probably each day or nearly each day. And now, since we have this wide international cooperation program, we can choose certain meals from uh, the menus of uh, our international partners. When I flew, we had certain uh, French meals because we flew the Frenchman. And now the geography of uh, astronauts that uh, take part in our flights is uh, so wide that we have meals uh, and uh, they do not repeat themselves uh, until the 17th or 20th day. So now the official part taking pictures. Come on. And please uh, join your hands. Thank you very much. What is it about day? In January? No, the 12th. That is not a mere coincidence. But uh, using the old uh, Gregorian calendar, it was December. So I need a pen. The pen is here. I'm ready. The crew need to be seated. They have three chairs. So we're supposed to write something. Right here, on the left.
Что делаем сюда? Все готово. Давай, улыбаемся, Александрович. Отлично. Леди, 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 мы на одной линии работаем. Так, всех девушек берем. Да. Теперь все, да? Так, ну что дальше? Смотрим. Идем по э, какой дорогой? Я думаю, Сюда, да? Да, да. Таник, можно ли? А у Кати? Вечер. Это не На меня, сегодня. пожалуйста, посмотрите. Майкл.